and you're pretty much okay for, for quite some time, and it's pretty imbalanced right now. I don't know what you guys think. HD, Frank, um, let me know what you guys think about the, uh, the Protoss force field. Yeah, it's Imba. I can't get up a ramp when there's force fields. It's impossible. But, uh, Frank, I, I know you wanted to answer a, a question related, so we'll go ahead and pass it to you. Actually, the uh, the question that I was going to answer was that one because I did want to go off a little bit into my favorite unit, which is the Raven. Um, I'm, I'm just going to go through some of the t well, actually, just this one unit because it is like the Terran spellcaster. Um, pretty much, what this unit can do is it's a detector. It pretty much looks like a nerd with uh, giant glasses flying through the air, um, and it's a detector, which is kind of ironic. I think they were kind of trying to make a joke there because it does look like it has these massive spectacles on its face. But uh, this, this, the spells that it can cast is this giant homing missile that does splash damage, and it goes really slow, but you need to pick out and separate the unit before it reaches because otherwise it's just going to slaughter a, this whole massive uh, group of units and it does a ton of damage. Um, however, my favorite thing about this unit is that it drops these turrets and the turrets only cost 50 energy so when this unit has full energy, which is 200 out of 200, you can create literally a four brick wall um, of these turrets that shoot in the air and on the ground and uh, They've actually won me probably three games. So if you could imagine, it's pretty much like it, it's like the perfect all-around unit. I mean, it creates a wall. It's rechargeable. It doesn't cost anything, and you can do drops with it. You can do probe harasses with it or mineral line harasses with it, and it's really not taking anything away from your army. It's it's essentially like doing an eraser trick with one unit. So um, I do have to say, although that is pretty much the only spellcaster that I really used as Terran. I do have to say that, along with Psionic Storm, which I have seen used on me pretty effectively, um, I do have to say that the uh, spellcasters are a massive part of SC2. Yeah, um, so I guess I'll go off on the Zerg tangent then to this question. Um, I have to agree, though, that spellcasters are definitely a huge part of the game right now, um, and they're much easier to use now. That's the thing. You can, you can pretty much group an entire group of spellcasters and let's say in StarCraft Brood War you select five High Templar and you press T for Storm, all of them would storm the same place, but now you can press T and click and one will storm and then T and click again and another will storm. So all spellcasters work with that smart casting that I think is available in Warcraft 3 as well. Um, but Zerg-wise, um, I don't think that spellcasters come into as much of play for Zerg players as much as, uh, say, Protoss or Terran players. I mean, Terran players have the Nighthawk, which is the Science Vessel equivalent, and that is uh, very pivotal piv pivotal in every game. And, uh, of course, Protoss still have their Psystorm, which is extremely important as well, and nullifiers for force field blocking ramps and in play, but... Uh, I don't think Zerg's spellcasters, it might just be me and how I played the game, but I played more of like just mass up Hydra's Lings, Ultras, Lurkers, everything, and just go throw them at the army, and that's the classic swarm mindset. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really use spellcasters all that much to my advantage, although I will say, um, I'll talk a little bit about the spellcasters that there are for the Zerg players right now. They do have the, um, the Corruptor, and... Actually, I played a test game versus Frank, and I'm sure Frank remembers this, where we actually sat down at the boots, and uh, we decided, hey, let's play one-on-one, -on -one, but let's not actually play to kill each other. Let's play and learn all the tech units we can, and learn what they can do. And um, at one point in the game, I'll talk about two units, the Overseer, which actually morphs from an Overlord. It's a cocoon, and it's, it's c similar to the Mutalist morphing into a Guardian. It, it comes out of the Overlord, becomes an Overseer. One of its abilities, um, of course, it can, uh, what was it? It can make a Changeling, pretty much, and the thing just plops down on the ground. It kind of looks like Muck from Pokemon, and it kind of just crawls with its arms to wherever it needs to go. And... Um, at first, I asked Frank to send out an SCV so that I could, you know, so that it could transform into a Marine. I'm sure you guys all know what it does. It transforms into the enemy unit that it first encounters. And as soon as Frank sent a Marine out there, it killed it instantly. So, 
I was a little confused as, as to why that happened. I sent out another change link, and I found out that you actually there's an active ability that you actually have to select from the change link and then target whatever unit you want it to morph into. So you have to do that pretty quickly. And as soon as it did that, it became the Marine. Although uh, I think if Frank, what, what happens is if Frank right clicks the change link once it's transformed, your Marines will automatically attack it or whatever unit you tell you right click onto it. So it's pretty easy to spot. And um, it's, I don't know how useful it is because Zergs just have overlords everywhere. They already have great sight capabilities. So I don't know how really useful it is. And it seems more of a gimmick to me. And But keep in mind, although I didn't really use spellcasters all that much, the other unit I will talk about is the Corruptor. The Corruptor can move underground. And um, one of its interesting abilities is spawn infested Terrans. It just creates five basically marines, which isn't very interesting to me, actually, um, because it just creates five marines, and it, there's no, like, you know, actually infesting a command center, so it's kind of lame in that regard. The other cool ability it does have is, um, I think it was called Parasite or something like that, um, where it'll actually shoot out, like, a little parasite onto the enemy unit, and it'll mind control it for 15 seconds, and it's like a channeling bar that shows up on the unit's portrait, similar to WoW channeling bars. When that goes away, the unit goes reverts back to the original owner's control. And I was thinking, hey, this would be cool if Frank could send out some SCVs, and I'll mind control his SCV and try to build a command center. Um, unfortunately, you can only control the SCV for 15 seconds, so I had to send out about 10 corruptors, continually mind control the SCV to to keep producing the command center because after 15 seconds the command center would stop, the SCV would revert back to Frank and it would be halfway complete. So I had to mind control like eight times in a row to finally finish the command center and build my own SCVs which were permanently under my control of course. But um, I don't know how uh, realistic that would be in a real game. You would have to have eight corruptors continually mind controlling an, an SCV or a probe and it just doesn't seem... I guess for, for Protoss it would be more practical because you only need to mind control it and then build a Nexus real quick and then that's said and done. But uh, to mind control a Terran technology would be very difficult indeed. And I, I kind of went on for a long time so I'll go ahead and pass it off. Um, you guys can take the next question. Yeah, um, they had okay. a couple little questions in there. Um, the Overseer doesn't take away from units available, but um, important to note is that the Overlord has to become an Overseer in order to become to get detection. That is important to, to note. And um, talking about this mind control thing, Dark Archons are no longer in the game. There's actually a huge difference in your tech choices when you're Protoss because you have to choose. after you, Instead of a Citadel of a Dune, they something like a Twilight guild, or I don't remember what it was specifically, but something along those lines, and uh, after that you have to choose whether you want to put down the building for High Templar or Dark Templar. You don't get them both with one building, unfortunately, and the Dark Templar do not morph into Dark Archon, so if you do go for the Dark Templar technology, you are pretty much at a, it, that's all you get. There, it is pretty much a dead end. There's no upgrades at that Dark Templar uh, power, whatever they called it, and um, whereas the High Templar, you do have your storms and your... Um, and your uh, uh, energy upgrade as well. Important to note, though, also, is that Hallucination got moved over to the Nullifier Disruptor. I think someone said that it's actually called a Disruptor now. And um, so that was interesting as well. Um, Frank, I think you had something to say there? Sorry, if I could interject uh, real quick. Um, I, I said that Infestors were... Uh the unit, or Corruptors, I'm sorry, it was actually Infestors, this ground spellcasting unit. Corruptors are the new anti-air, so, yeah, sorry about that. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, I was actually going to clarify that also. That was going to be the first thing I was going to say. Um, I'm going to take two questions. One of them uh, is really quick. Somebody asked a little while back about momentum. Is there momentum? Uh, where I think he means, like, is there, like, a startup time where the unit goes a little bit slower and then it needs to build up momentum before it can go its full speed. Yes, there is. Just like uh, if you have ever seen a ZVZ go for a fairly long time, you'll see the um, the pro players, if they have their mutalisks back at their base, they'll keep them constantly moving so that they're full speed and they don't have to go through that process of speeding up again so that they have full speed and they're going uh, and microing away. Um, let me take this question down here, though. This is one of the last ones. Um, actually, you know what? I saw a question a little while back here that I, I do want to get to, too. I don't want to skip any of these. Um, okay, so this question is, one of the developers mentioned that Zerg have fewer finishing options in the late game. Did you guys see this discrepancy? Um, it, I think I want you to clarify a little bit on what you mean by finishing options. Uh, because the Ultralisk tech was pretty devastating. I mean, I did not want to see Ultralisks ever. Uh, they were 
frightening to look at, and they dealt a freaking crap load of damage, and I did not want to deal with them. Not to mention they burrowed. Imagine an elephant burrowing into the ground, and then it coming up with these giant, like, put its tusks on its hands, and that's essentially what an ultralisk looks like, and you do not want to see that ever in your life. Um, anyways, this other question down here, were StarCraft and SC2 the most prominent game at BlizzCon? Um, I will say that I, I have to give Blizzard a lot of credit because they... I went in there expecting there to be this tight-knit community of StarCraft fans 